Hi, everybody. Bob Wolf speaking. Our guest, Rocky Colavito of the Cleveland Indians. Rocky, there have been many great moments in your baseball career, and there are many big ones still ahead, I know. But I'm sure one you'll always remember is the night of June 10th, 1959. In that game against the Baltimore Orioles, you had four home runs in one game to tie a major league record. I'd like to ask you about that game. Do you recall, as you went along, did you ever stop to think that that record might be at hand, that this might be your big night? Well, Bob, uh, that was the most wonderful night in my baseball career, and uh, that's number one. And uh, as far as uh, uh, recalling that uh, it was a baseball record, I, I have always known that four home runs was a baseball record in one game. But, uh, you know, you go in a ball game and you hit your first home run, and, and you, you're just glad if you get a base hit to go along with it. And uh, then you hit your second home run, you feel the same way. And then on to the third. I hit the third, and I just said, uh, boy, this is, this is my best night in the big leagues, hitting three home runs in one game. So if I just could get a base hit and have uh, a four for four night, I'd be real happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the second pitch, I hit the ball. I knew as soon as I hit it, it was up in there. And I just, I, I could have jumped up around the bases. I felt so good about it. Uh, it was just the most wonderful thrill I've ever had in baseball. Mm -hmm. When you went up then the fourth time, there wasn't any real pressure to hit another one, huh? None whatsoever. I figured, uh, I figured I had a fairly good night uh, with three home runs. And, uh, and if I just could get a base hit to make it that even four for four, I'd be real happy. I wasn't going to be greedy about it. <laughs> well, did they pitch you different every time? Well, uh, are you referring to uh, what the pitches were? Would you like to know that, Bob? Mm -hmm. Well, the first pitch was a slider uh, off Jerry Walker. The second pitch, I'm not sure if it was a curve or a slider, but I have a feeling it was a slider. And uh, the first one was sort of down, and the second was sort of up. Uh, the third pitch was a low fastball. I got it just before it sunk. And a little tiny bit away. And the last pitch was a high inside fastball. Mm -hmm. uh, on that high inside fastball there, is, uh, is that the one that you usually hit pretty well for a home run? Well, Bob, I'm a funny sort of a hitter. Uh, when I'm hitting well, I, I might get good with on a high inside fastball, and, uh, and I might hit the low outside ball. It, it, it depends. When you're hitting well, I don't think there's any particular uh, spot for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've hit some balls real good. And the same goes from when I'm hitting bad. I, I can, they'll get me out on just about anything. Mm -hmm. Rocky, uh, back in the early days, did you have designs to become an outfielder or a pitcher? Uh, I wanted to be a, an outfielder. The reason is uh, I wanted to play every day. Now, when I signed, I signed as a pitcher outfielder. And I thought that uh, if I couldn't uh, hit well in the spring, why I'd go to pitching. But uh, I always felt I could hit a little bit, and uh, I wanted the chance to prove I was wrong or right. Mm -hmm. You uh, were born, actually, not far from Yankee Stadium. That's right, Bob. I was born five minutes from Yankee Stadium. And uh, I saw a lot of uh, ball games when I was young, and uh, Yankees were always my ball club as a young boy. Mm -hmm. I recall you're telling me that it were your brothers that really uh, helped to develop your arm. Is that right? Oh, yes. My brothers, uh, they used to make me throw all the time. And uh, like the story I once told you, before supper at times, uh, there was a fence I had to throw the ball over. And uh, I can re recall that real well, and I think that helped develop my arm. Because mm -hmm. without God putting it there, I don't think uh, all the throwing you could would develop it. Rocky, with your ability to hit the long ball and uh, pull them as you do to left, have you noticed that the pitchers, for the most part, are, are working on you now in a certain way? Well, Bob, uh, I, I've had that question put up to me quite often lately. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't think they'd wait until the next year to, uh, to try to alter anything that they think they're doing wrong, anything mm -hmm. to stop you. I think they're going to go right to it. Uh, I, if they, what I mean by that is if you're getting a couple of hits off them in a series, I think they're going to go right on and try to do something about it in that next ball game. I don't think they're going to wait until next year. Well, for example, do they try to pitch you on the outside, knowing that if they get it inside, you can pull it into the seats? No, I don't think so, Bob. I've hit some balls uh, that are away from me out of the ballpark, too. I think what they try to do is go in and out with me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they try to set me up, maybe looking for something away and try to jam me, and then uh, maybe if they, if they think I'm thinking about getting jammed, they might try to go away from me. They try to keep you off balance, uh, change of uh, speeds and stuff like that. Well, suppose they try to keep throwing you that curve breaking uh, on the outside corner. That would seem to be a tough one to hit. Well, yes, Bob, but I think that uh, the pitcher has to give the hitter a little credit and vice versa. And uh, I think that if they're going to throw me out there all the time, I think, uh, and I have done it in the past, uh, I'm going to just try to go through the middle with the ball. <laughs> and uh, after all, you got to get smart. I mean, uh, you stand up there and be a dumbbell, you're not going to get any place, so I try to do my best. Yeah. Well, that's part of the deal, being able to think as well as swing the bat. Huh? I think so. I think you have to try to figure them out and see what they're doing with you. How about your stance? Has anybody ever uh, altered it, or is this the one that comes natural to you, Rocky? Well, uh, this has come natural lately, uh, the last few years. Now, I used to have a very wide open spread stance. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kirby Farrell back in 53 in Reading, he changed that 
and they had me crouching down low. I had a fairly good year in Indianapolis hitting that way, and as soon as I got to the big leagues, uh, without seeing much of me, they said, uh, you can't hit that way in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, why, I don't know, but uh, that's the funny thing. When you have an odd stance to say you can't hit that way. So, uh, and I've always been a bad starter in the spring. So I went to a little open stance, and now I sort of closed up just a wee bit, but I don't crouch over. I see. And I like hitting that way. It's comfortable. What do you like to do for recreation when your baseball is over or during the off season? Bob, I just love to hunt. Uh, I always have, uh, ever since, uh, well, let's say ever since eight, I was about 18, 17, about nine years now. And uh, I enjoy doing that as well as anything. Do you have an off-season baseball job? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I could work for the ball club, I would imagine, but uh, I like it at home in Pennsylvania, and I go back there and, and uh, I've done different things. Last year I had a lot of uh, personal appearances, and uh, I also worked for a friend of mine who owns a Temple Mushroom Transportation Corporation. What were you doing? Uh, I was uh, sort of, uh, I went around to these different growers and uh, picked up these uh, mushrooms, and uh, I understand he has something a little different in mind for me this year. I see. So you're a combination mushroom picker, a home run hitter, a speaker, and all around good man. Well, I try to be, Bob. I, I like to be a gentleman whenever I can. Well, Rocky Calavito, it certainly is a great pleasure to have you with us. And certainly, uh, the way that you've been wrapping that apple around, there are many records still ahead of you, which I'm sure you'll take care of. Well, thank you, Bob. I, s I sincerely appreciate that. And now, folks, this is Bob Wolf speaking, along with Rocky Calavito. Here's something else I'd like you to see. Hi, everybody. Bob Wolf speaking, along with Herb Score of the Cleveland Indians. Herb Score is the roommate of Rocky Calavito, and Rocky is the roommate of Herb Score looking at the other way. Herb, I guess you tell uh, fellows are more than uh, roommates. Your, your real uh, close friends have been for many years, isn't that That's right? That's right, Bob. I think we're more like brothers than we are friends because uh, we've been together a long time, and uh, uh, even during the wintertime, we stay pretty close together. It's a uh, real good relationship. Herb Rocky has just stepped in the batter's cage, so you take over the microphone and, and tell our viewers uh, a little about Rocky's batting style, okay? Fine, Bob. Well, Rocky stands about midway uh, back in the batter's box. He, ha he has a rather closed stance, and he doesn't stride quite as far as he once did, which probably has helped make him a better hitter. If you notice while he's swinging here in batting practice, that ball he just hit was outside, and he, and he just went right into the ball and hit it to right field. I think one of the things that has really helped Rocky is his ability to learn to wait on the ball, which most young ball players uh, have a tendency to be anxious, and that was Rocky's problem. Now, if you'll notice, he has very quick hands, uh, and that has really made him a better hitter, waiting on the ball. He now realizes that he has real good, quick hands, and that is why he's able to wait longer and hit that curveball better now. Rocky was always a real good fastball hitter, and he still is today. But I would venture to say that most of his uh, home runs now come off the breaking ball because he sees more of them, and uh, he just learned to hit them and wait on a ball. Right there is a good example. He hit that ball, uh, I don't know how far, a long way, about 350, 360 feet, and he just had a nice, easy, relaxed swing on it. There's another one that was way out over the plate, and he hit it to deep left center field. In fact, it went in the seats out there. A real good hitter. One of the things I think about Rocky, and uh, I think this is interesting to young ball players as well as anybody else, is his uh, determination and confidence. That's actually what's made Rocky the hitter he is. Uh, a few weeks ago, Rocky had a little bad streak, and he was 0 for 18. And uh, I'd see him after the game. He'd come into the room. He'd say, well, Rumi says, uh, I'll get him tomorrow. I have never seen Rocky discouraged or, or down. And it happens to all of us. I know I'm the supreme pessimist of our room, and he's the optimist. Uh, Rocky will say a day of a game, well, I'm going to go out. I feel good today. I think I'll get a few hits. I'll say, well, I hope we win. And uh, he, he more or less figures he's going to do it. I just say to myself, I hope we can do it. Real good, determined hitter. Rocky has many different mannerisms. You'll see him in a batting circle or before he gets up at bat stretching and putting the bat behind his head and stretching his muscles. And uh, just a real determined baseball player. I think that's what's made Rocky is determination.